So hi everyone, the next event is uh, is starting. So uh, this event will be led by Maria Grazia Graziano uh, and uh, will be fully hybridized. So all of our speakers will be joining on Teams. Okay, thank you very much, Rashir. And um, uh, good afternoon to all. I'm going to share my screen and my presentation. Um, my name is Maria Grazia Graziano, and I work for the Joint Research Center of the uh, European Commission, and I'm scientific project office officer at the Biopharma project. So I'm trying to share my screen. Um, so, uh, Biopharma uh, has a strong focus on protected areas management effectiveness and protected areas governance and equity. And uh, uh, so, the session is focused on these two big pillars of the, our project. And uh, that is the table of contents of what we are going to touch uh, with the contribution of my colleague, that are Claire Vincent from UNEP WCMC. Uh, Carlo Paolini for the HIMET and Bertil Magien uh, talking about uh, tools, uh, IMET and others, and uh, a contribution of uh, from Heisen Hamstrom from IUCN Caribbean team, and Rob Small uh, talking about uh, site assessment, governance and equity, and uh, social assessment protected areas from uh, Plurifine International. So I would thank all my colleagues, and um, and I hope that uh, will be a very interesting session to you all. Um, I, uh, I'm also supported by some colleagues. Terik Takala is online with us. Uh, she set a Slido, and uh, you can use the Slido uh, to uh, uh, put your question and, and also to answer to a few questions that we uh, would like to know more about our audience. So please use the Slido to be in contact with us. Uh, so Biopharma is a program that is implemented by UCN and GRC. Uh, it's focused on the African, Caribbean, Pacific group of states. And uh, in the GRC, we are um, responsible for the uh, information, so from data to information, uh, and uh, using technology. So we are responsible for the reference information system, where we put the best scientific available information to this web platform to reach our audience, and also to simplify, to translate what can be scientifically uh, complex in something that is more understandable. And um, we would like also to uh, to support all the effort that uh, conservationists uh, do on management effectiveness and governance. And we would like also to support the decision-making process. Um, we we know that PR success and, and the and the achievement of conservation hub depend on our effective management and good governance, and uh, and for this uh, uh, we we taught a, a, a module in our system. About these two topics, these two important topics. So what I'm I'm going to 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 do now is just to uh, just to uh, briefly show uh, you the the RIS and uh, and the module that we set. Um, so I'm going to share my screen again and my interactive. Uh, okay, so this is our landing page. Uh, in the Biopharma RIS re re reference information system, we have a PAMI module. And uh, here uh, we are trying to uh, um, uh, promote all the activity that are in relation to the, the management effectiveness. So people that can uh, are interested, but also they are related to our program and not, but for example, in, in the country, Have a user uh, and a ID and a, a login in our system. It can contribute also with the, their data and their and their information. Uh, that is really for us an important uh, and relevant step to uh, improve PA culture in terms of data sharing. 
And um, so in, a, in our model, uh, we have a different uh, section uh, that the user can, for example, uh, have an overview about the different tools that are available. So the easily can have access to the, uh, the guide the guide of the different tools that uh, are used, for example, in his country. If the the know the, the guide and uh, he knows about uh, other resources, he can contact us and we can implement that. Uh, we can also, uh, the user can also uh, have access uh, to the management plan of the protected areas that is um, interest, uh, or for example, is looking for, for, a, for a management plan. Uh, plan it can filter so we are trying to have uh, the functionalities that they can uh, help the users to navigate and I would finish my uh, short introduction about the role of Biopharma in supporting all the activities or in relation to the management effectiveness showing also this page the assessments so uh, that is an introduction to the next speaker that is Claire uh, this section of uh, our module is uh, a direct uh, link with the G department database, the global database on protectarious management effectiveness. We are trying to, uh, to support their work, the great work on that, uh, providing access to all our users. And we put some interesting uh, functionalities because, for example, we can uh, filter for, for tool. So I'd like to know, for example, where met. Uh, assessment were done. Uh, I can choose here. I can choose, for example, the typology of protected area. So, for example, I can put coastal or marine. And easily the user can have a list of the region, country, protected area name, designation, and the methodology, and here where the assessment was done. Okay, so say that. Please uh, um, enjoy the session, uh, contact us and uh, put question in the box. And uh, I leave, I pass the floor to Claire to uh, present uh, the GD Palme uh, and the work that the UNIP WCMC is doing. Thank you, Maria, grazie. Um, so as Maria Grazia said, I'm Claire Vincent and I work um, at the United Nations Environment Programme's World Conservation Monitoring Centre. Um, and I manage the global database on PAME, Protected Area Management Effectiveness. So today I'm just going to give a very brief overview of how, um, through the BioPAME programme, we're helping to enhance reporting of this PAME data to global databases. Um, so just a quick summary of PAME, if you're not very familiar with it yet. Um, so the IUCN uh, World Commission on Protected Areas created this framework to assess PAME that revolves around six key um, elements. And, and most of the uh, methodologies uh, are framed around this, this framework. Um, there's many methodologies that have been developed uh, for either the site level or for a full system. Um, and they're mostly based on self-assessment surveys. And they measure progress towards specific management objectives of the protected area site or the network of protected areas. Um, and some methodologies can also include components uh, assessed through quantitative data um, when that's available. So why do protected areas undertake these assessments? Um, firstly, it's very useful for adaptive management at the site level, and you can integrate the results from these assessments into strategic planning and operational planning and decision making. Uh, it helps with um, reporting and it promotes uh, accountability and transparency uh, with, with reporting. Um, or a network of protected areas um, by, by allocating resources efficiently and in the way that will most benefit um, the, the site or to achieve their objectives. 
And the assessments also take into account a lot of stakeholder um, participation. So it can help with supporting um, uh, stakeholder participation and understanding of, of the importance of the site. And then finally, the data can also be used for global reporting. Um, so the GDPAME was an indicator for IHE target 11, and it's a proposed, um, proposed indicator for the upcoming post-2020 target three. Um, and the GDPAME, as we mentioned, is hosted on the Protected Planet website, um, which hosts a lot of databases related to protected areas, including the World Database on Protected Areas, the WDPA, the World Database on Other Effective Area-Based Conservation Measures, the WDOECM, and then finally here, GDPAME, the Global Database on Protected Area Management Effectiveness, uh, that I'll talk a little bit more about today. So currently in the GDPAME, um, we have more than 28,000 evaluations from 177 countries and territories around the world. This might sound like a, a large number, but it really only accounts for about 8% of the protected areas that we have in the World Database on Protected Areas. Um, and if we look at how much area of the globe these assessments um, cover, they're usually in large protected areas, so it's um, it actually accounts for just over 18% of the area covered by protected areas have been assessed uh, for PAME. So Maria Grazia showed the BioPalma um, database website. We have um, a very similar one for the global level on protectedplanet.net. If you go to the thematic areas uh, management effectiveness page, then you can see the, the tabular um, data that we have in the database. Uh, and you can download this data directly from the website as a CSV. Um, you can also filter the data by methodology, by country, year of assessment, um, or type. So that's the marine uh, or terrestrial, similar to that shown on the Biopalma RIS. Although, um, on Protected Planet, there's no map feature. Um, if you do want to see it on a map, you need to link it to the WDPA uh, through the WDPA ID. So the structure of the database um, is quite basic. The main objectives are indicate if a protected area in the WDPA has been evaluated uh, for its management effectiveness and to indicate if that assessment has been made publicly available. So it contains uh, most of the same information that Maria Grazia showed, the name of the protected area designation, the WDPA ID to link it to the other databases on Protected Planet, um, the country, the methodology, the year of assessment, and then if it's available, there's a URL link that can take you to the raw assessment. So how do we update the database? Um, so originally we would go directly to the source and all of the assessments we got were from um, protected area managers or uh, national focal points who um, had the intellectual property rights for this data and they would share it with my team in Cambridge at UNEP WCNC and we would integrate it into the GDPAME, which would then be made publicly available um, through Protected Planet and to other um, websites through um, APIs and sharing services. But with the um, implementation of the BioPalma program, we now have these regional observatories who help um, us at, obtain data from the site level to the regional level and they collate this information at the regional level um, and then pass the data on to us in Cambridge. And this really facilitates uh, the flow of data and has increased um, the number of assessments that we have um, acquired. 
So how the data flows, um, so first the data provider uh, shares the data uh, with our team. Um, and then the next step is the data is quality checked and formatted to make sure that it fits uh, the database uh, requirements. And then we also need to check that the site is already in the world database on protected areas. And if it isn't, it needs to be added to that database first. So those first three steps are now undertaken by uh, the Biopalma Regional Observatories. And they work back and forth with the data providers to make sure the data is in the correct format. And once it is, then they pass the data on to my team at UNEPWCMC. We enter the data into the global database, verify that everything is correct, and then we share the, um, the data publicly on a protected planet. So the data providers um, vary depending on the type of assessment, um, where it was implemented and various other um, factors. Uh, they can include governments, um, international secretariats such as Ramsar or the World Heritage uh, Secretariat, um, regional entities. So I've been talking about the Biopama regional entities. There's also the, uh, the European CDDA. Um, NGOs can also provide data um, or any other entity or individual. Basically, whoever has undertaken the assessment and who has the um, intellectual property rights for that data can share the data uh, with the GDPOMI. So there are a few challenges with this database. Um, there is a lack of capacity and resources at the national level and at the site level to undertake these assessments um, because they should be an ongoing process and uh, should be undertaken every couple of years. Um, protected planet, which makes then the usefulness of the data a little bit less um, so we, we're, we're working on increasing the amount of data that we have the potential to share. It's also very difficult to compare uh, across methodologies. As I said at the beginning, there's, there's been numerous methodologies developed for measuring PAME. Um, and in our database, we have over 70 methodologies at the moment. And so comparing outcomes between uh, across these methodologies is very difficult. Um, which then makes it difficult to monitor global progress um, on conservation outcomes with the current data that we have publicly available. And just to finish up um, going forward, the role that um, Biopama has and um, that we are trying to support the Biopama program to do is to increase the capacity. Um, I'm sure the next speaker will talk about um, the IMET champions that Biopama is supporting across the African, Caribbean and Pacific regions. So increasing the capacity to undertake these assessments, um, increasing the data that we have available, and then also sharing the results um, publicly through GDPAME and Protected Planet, as well as through the Biopama RIS and other uh, online services. So thank you very much, and I'll stick around for the questions at the end if if any came up. Thank you very much, Claire. And uh, really thank you. And uh, I, uh, as you anticipated, I I would uh, uh, leave the the floor to uh, Carlo Paolini, talking about um, IMET the integrated management effectiveness uh, tool, tracking tool. And uh, as you said, we need good methodologies, IT uh, system, but also uh, good processes and, uh, and participation. So the role of the, of the tools in the field is crucial. And, and so uh, we have now a session where we are talking about HIMET and uh, there will be high cent uh, uh, talking about uh, the experience in the Caribbean, Bertil, and so and uh, and we finish with Rob 
uh, talking about the other important pillar that is the social assessment and the site assessment for governance and equity. So I uh, pass the floor to Carlo Paolini uh, uh, for the, the IMET contribution. Thank you. Thank you, Maria Grazia. Um, I try to share my screen at the same time. I try to introduce myself and the presentation. I don't know if you see my presentation on the screen. So good afternoon. My name is Carlo Paolini. I cooperate as external team with Biopama concerning the management effectiveness and the collaboration with the protected area. I would like to talk about the proposal for the PAM analysis report that is linked with IMET in, in the approach, but is something that maybe uh, is an answer what Claire said about different PAM tools. This, uh, this um, PAM analysis report was developed in support of the BioPAM action component. The analysis of the first phase of the BioPAM action funds has highlighted the weak result-oriented proposal by the applicants in reason of the insufficient analysis of the context and the management. So as a result, we develop a module to facilitate the analysis of applicants for a more outcome-oriented approach. The module provides the possibility to harmonize the result of any assessment and provide a database of protected area uh, management efforts for improved uh, intervention strategy in general. Uh, uh, Carlo, so if you could, confirm could you please, uh, that, uh, go yeah? into presentation mode? We still see the settings of your PowerPoint. It would be nicer to see it full screen. So on the bottom, okay. next to the mi minus button, yes. Yeah. Wonderful, thank now you. Now I think it's good. Okay, so we start with the contents. This, the presentation is really very short. We just introduced IMET as a systematic approach to the planning, monitoring, and evaluation. And then we go to the PAM analysis report where there is a three main, three main section, basic data, management effectiveness, and analysis and planning. There is a more section about additional information. So we, <coughs> we are just to speak about IMET, not in the detail, but to explain that the IMET is a systematic approach to planning, monitoring, and evaluation. There is three sections. So the first one is intervention contest, where there are the general information, the profile of the protected area, the situation at the moment, and this help to establish the management effectiveness of the six elements standard for the management uh, evaluation. On the basis of the intervention contest and management evo evaluation, we can go to the analysis report. The analysis report is uh, uh, elaborated to the operating recommendation that help to establish, which is the base for uh, planning. So in this case, <clears throat> we uh, complete the cycle from uh, planning, monitoring, and evaluation. The PAM analysis report is built on the IMET analysis <coughs> report and uh, allow the storage, centralization, improvement of assessment of the PAM assessment, but could be also, in a, it doesn't matter what kind of analysis on management effectiveness and the conclusion over the time. So built also capacity for analysis at site level because the standardized the the methodology for uh, analysis and planning aim to ensure the link between the PAM assessment and the outcome oriented approach. And uh, at the end, we uh, ensure for the national parks team to have a strong case that uh, is available for planning, analysis, funding, and so on. This can also to uh, establish in the time the, um, the same elements to uh, about the management effectiveness of a different protected area uh, um, analyzed with different PAM uh, tools. The PAM analysis report uh, is um, the first element is the basic data. So there is just the general information of the protected area is uh, the ID, 
they protect their profile. And then there is the management effectiveness section. We start from the synthesis of the main finding from the previous management effectiveness concerning uh, priority action, outcome, uh, output. And then on this base, so basic data, profile of the protected area, synthesis of the previous management, we can establish the elements of the management effective and assessment, how the work is, work is performing at this moment. The last section is to improve the <coughs> planning. We start from analysis, so the power analysis report suggests to use SWOT. It is one of the simplest tools on analysis, but we can use another more sophisticated tool. And then from the analysis, there is a framework that helps to structure the logical of intervention with the outcome, output, and the priority action uh, logically linked between them. This is uh, the base of a PAM analysis report. At the end, we suggest a, a last uh, section about additional information of interest because it's uh, important to know which is the information gaps. In this case, the regional uh, um, uh, observatory, the digital observatory, but also university institution can help to, to, to the protect the area in uh, reducing this uh, gap in information. Um, this is the link that we establish, uh, we try to establish between the digital observatory and the protected area. But there is also information and modality about the <coughs> carry out the priority action, which is the minimum operating budget, which is the operating budget that uh, is, uh, you need to, uh, to establish a good management, and which is the management action that you can uh, in add with additional funding. Sometimes uh, that area has a special project that they want to improve or they need. So there is a, this kind of uh, uh, question that we, we put in the PAM analysis report. Then there is other you know, consideration that the teams can uh, uh, establish to uh, reinforce uh, the analysis. So this is the end. More than I met, we speak from this PAM analysis report. And um, the PAM analysis report for the moment is in a word format, but because we have to, to test in the action uh, component uh, of BioPAM. And then we can also put in uh, online, offline uh, module that can help to uh, create a database on the standard about PAME uh, analysis report and the better plan. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Carlo, for your contribution. I would reinforce the message that the PAM analysis report is one of the last steps that BioPAM is promoting. Uh, that is transversal in relation to the different tools. So we'd delight to uh, uh, to have an analysis report that whatever tools the protected areas is going to use, because uh, we really would we really want to help people in the field to so to help people to to better know what they are doing in terms of uh, uh, actions for their protected areas uh, supporting them in the management. Um, so now I, I know that in the room, uh, Bertil Mayen should be there. And so I pass the floor to Bertil and I will put in the screen uh, her slide so she can talk about uh, data to decision in her experience. Rushi, could you confirm it that uh, Bertil is there? Just switching mics here. Okay, thank you. 
Hi, Mary Grazia. Hello, everyone. My name is Bertil Mayen. I'm a project coordinator for GIZ, working in Ivory Coast and in Liberia. And um, what we do is actually link to the transbordering landscape TGS, which is Thai National Park, Grebo National, Grebo Kran National Park, and Sapo National Parks in uh, in Liberia. And here we are working on the restoration of the landscape, the TGS landscape, as well as the restoration of the ecological uh, connectivity between those uh, different um, national parks. And of course, uh, Marie Gracia, I do concur with you that um, site navigation in terms of management of protected area is no longer acceptable. We live in an era where there is so much you know, uh, funding that is poured into the national parks. So much resources have been pulled out by the different partners to ensure that we have um, protected area that are not on paper just protected area, but protected area that are efficient in terms of not only the management, but in terms also of all the ecosystemic uh, services that it can also provide. And to make sure there's also equilibrium between the well-being of the community living around those protected areas and the objective of the creation of those protected areas. To come to the PAMI and, um, and the PAGE tools, I have to say that um, in, in the TGS landscape, it has been a long history of using these different tools. The first one was the MET that was used in, in the Thai National Park for all these years and adds has really enabled us to, to cross and to compare all the different uh, data collected and the different actions that were done uh, 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 throughout the years. And also, um, as you can see what is listed here on the, on the, on the, on the slide, you know, the, the area has been recognized as a, as a very important bird area. And the tools was also used for, for that purpose. Um, currently, we are going through the IUCN green list, and uh, the process is, is, is ongoing. And definitely, this is to take the protected area, the, 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 the park, the Thai National Park, to another level, where actually not only we have the assurance that the National Park is well managed, but also to go to a level of certification. So in, indeed, these tools are, are definitely important when we look at the future of the, 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 the biodiversity conservation in the TGS landscape. And also we have the IMET that has been used um, in, the, in the past, in the past uh, three, four years. And this year, actually early this year in February, we ran a second IMET and we even went further um, uh, um, during our, our assessment because we also did the two other modules of the IMED, the law enforcement and the governance um, for ecosystem services. So definitely these are the key and, and critical information that we need to do appropriate planning when it comes to, to, to managing these protected areas. And as well, we are planning to do a social assessment for, for these protected areas, which is SAPA, and the site level governance assessment, SAGE, in, in November in, the, in this landscape. And also you have the tool SMART that has been used in, this, uh, in these different protected areas concerning uh, ecological monitoring and, and patrolling. So definitely in terms of the application of these tools, we have actually experienced that is quite important and it has helped us to, to move you know, for, forward in terms of the management of these protected areas. And basically, if, if I have a word to say here, is to remind everyone that it, these tools actually makes our life easier. Most of the time we, okay, how can I put it? We, we tend to compare the different tools that we have and we tend to say um, this is good um, but we have been using this, this is what we have been doing for the past years and why should we change to another tool? 
um, these tools have different scopes of, um, of actions and, and different objectives to attend. We are looking at result-based management in terms of protected areas. We are looking at performance. We are looking at governance and equity. So all these tools definitely contribute toward attaining um, these different objectives. And it's so important for us to keep that in mind, that it's, it's not about which tool is better than the other one. It's about um, having a toolbox from which we can select the tool that is definitely appropriate to help us in the work that we are doing. Um, this is our experience and, and what I'm sharing with you from what we have been doing both in this landscape now that I'm coordinating the TGS projects in, in Ivory Coast and before that um, when I was also working in Cameroon and in Chad, those tools have really, really help us to move forward, to delve deeper into the analysis, to have something that is structured, that is clear, and also having the graphics um, that can clearly uh, uh, state out what, um, what are the different uh, uh, um, key issues that we need to look at, the, the, the red flags that we quickly pick up once we have done the evaluation. So I'm really encouraging everyone um, who is following um, the session today to see exactly uh, what is important for them and what is more suitable for their protected area to have a better uh, uh, um, management of, of, of their PAs. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Bertil. And uh, I would ask to share to uh, send uh, the to share the uh, the video uh, that uh, I sent Amstervon uh, prepare for us. That is quite a good example of uh, biopama work because everything started with a regional workshop on management of fatiness in the Caribbean. Uh, and uh, IUCN Caribbean team uh, was able to support a national request from Seleucia. So we are going to learn more uh, thanks to, to this video. So if possible, Rochelle, uh, it could be great to have this video. program in the Caribbean. I'd like to take a little time today to share with you our experience in protected area management effectiveness. In 2018, Biopama conducted a desk review to get a sense of what protected area management effectiveness was like in the 15 Caribbean project countries. The results show that 13 of these countries had evidence of management effectiveness being done. There were 47 documented management effectiveness assessments found across 78 sites. The period covered 1972 to 2016, and the tools used were a PAM, Belize National Report, Maripa G, PIP Consolidation, MET, How Is Your Marine Protected Area Doing, and OPAL. The study also identified some gaps in particular, Barbados, Central and Island Tobago had no documented management effectiveness assessments. For some of the countries, there were only a small number of assessments found. Considering at that time there were 914 protected area sites in the World Database on Protected Areas, we could only find 78 documented assessments. There was no data in the Global Database on Protected Area Management Effectiveness. Studies indicated that where assessments were done, the information collected may remain unshared. And finally, a lot, or there was an absence of repeat assessments. A majority of the sites indicated that assessments were simply a one-off event and were never repeated. For us in the Caribbean, as we move to achieve the objectives of Biopama, which are to improve the management and governance of protected areas, 
We facilitated a regional workshop in June 2018 in St. Lucia to sensitize our stakeholders to the management effectiveness process, the framework, and the value of doing this work on a regular basis. Since that time, Biopharma has supported 12 site assessments in five countries, with four of those site assessments being repeat assessments. Also at the request of the St. Lucia Protected Area Agencies, Biopharma supported the development of a national tool. The following video highlights the process used to develop that tool. So for Biopharma in the Caribbean going forward, we will continue to support the efforts to support the efforts to implement management effectiveness in the region through the action component, which is the grant mechanism of the Biopharma program. We will be supporting assessments for approximately 30 sites across four countries. And the main tools will be the MET, the IMET, and the Enhancing Our Heritage tool. We will also continue to support countries in conducting repeat assessments. And so far we are working with Antigua and Barbuda in this regard. And we continue to use our partners and build partnerships in the region to advance management effectiveness in the region. So we will be working with the Caribbean Environment Program of the United Nations Environment Program. We will be collaborating with the Global Environment Facility Small Grants Program in Jamaica. And of course, with our national stakeholders in our project countries to continue to build awareness and capacity for protected area management effectiveness. Thank you very much for this opportunity. Have a good day.
Thank you, Rusher. Thank you, Hyacinth. And um, I pass the floor uh, to Rob, that is the last speaker of this session, to talk about aspects, the governance, the equity, and the social time. So over to you, Rob. Okay, thank you, Mary Pancha. Can everyone, can you see the slide? Uh, co created by Hello, Rob. Uh, we just had a little network issue uh, for the first 15 seconds of your presentation, so we can see your screen just fine. But if you could uh, just take it from the top, that would be yeah. ideal. So as well. Okay, you're you're back on on Is screen. Okay? Now. Yes. Yeah. So SAFA is a, it's a simple, cost-effective and open source methodology for assessing the positive and negative impacts on local people's well-being um, of protected or conserved area and any related conservation development activities uh, and general governance issues. Um, the goal is to enable PA managers and other key stakeholders to increase positive impacts and share more equitably and fairly and to reduce negative impacts of protected areas um, or conserved areas and any related conservation or development activities. So enhance the positive impacts, reduce the negative impacts. The, the key element of the methodology is that it's using a, a, a simple uh, method for community-led identification of, of impacts as opposed to sort of coming with a, a predetermined set of impacts that you want to assess. Um, it's letting communities um, identify those impacts um, and also critically to um, have a, a multi-stakeholder approach where we are not just it's not just about a protected area authority it's about NGOs or um, civil society organizations working the site working together to identify impacts and then to jointly identify how how actually to be taken to do something about those impacts so the the assessment has assessed SAFRA is now being used in over 25 sites. Uh, this has been predominantly in sub-Saharan Africa, um, in eight countries in the period 2016 through to 2020, um, and the four, four additional countries um, currently planning or undertaking SAFRA assessments um, in Benin, Nigeria, Rwanda, and Papua New Guinea. So the, there's been a, a broad range of, of conveners of these assessments that includes state protected area authorities, particularly the Uganda Wildlife Authority and the Kenyan Wildlife Service, um, private, private conservancies and also community conserved areas. So noting that the coverage is somewhat skewed, is skewed towards sub-Saharan Africa and particularly East Africa, um, but we hope that um, uptake and use of the uh, methodology will be, will increase and that's definitely um, through Biopharma um, Small, current small grants, which has enabled the assessments to, to happen in Benin, Nigeria and PNG. And as Batio mentioned in her presentation, um, SAF will also be used in Liberia, and that will be a repeat uh, of a uh, SAF assessment that was conducted in SAF National Park. We also have repeat of the methodology at Old Pedestal Conservancy in Kenya. So, in effect, our, the goal is to develop relatively simple, easy to use methodologies that can be driven by site-based actors as opposed to using third parties. It has a five-step process from preparing the assessment, um, scoping, conducting community-based um, uh, identification of impacts, conducting household surveys that have been that are informed and driven by the impacts identified by local people, uh, conducting, uh, assessing and feeding back results and then developing an action plan. So the link is there for, we have a, a multilingual methodology manuals, templates and tools that are all um, open and freely available through the IIED website. Um, but a, a critical element to all of this has been the, um, you know, we have templates and tools, but these are spreadsheet based or, or Word document based. 
Um, and working with uh, UGRC, we are in the process of developing a, an, a software tool to help with it, the uh, analysis um, and data management of the different steps within SAPA. This, this um, software is currently in, in development and we expect to have a beta version available by the end of this, this year. Um, so that will allow the, the idea is that the software tool will, will help, help users um, hold in one place a feasibility checklist, conduct a stakeholder analysis that will then feed into our scoping phase in which it's known who to, who to approach, which communities go to, uh, conducting in, impact ranking um, within the software, helping link to survey design within using um, Cobra Toolbox or um, Open Data Kit. Um, allowing the analysis of that that data as opposed to users spending time figuring out how to do analysis it will help users lead them through that process so that they can be more focused upon um, actually having action around impacts that we see um, and I think we're heartened by the fact that we're starting to see repeats of this methodology at different sites uh, within um, within Africa and, and hope on on further expansion of that and then just quickly moving through to an, an associated another methodology called SAGE. So this is a, a methodology tool for assessing governance of protected areas. So it has two objectives, um, to enable site level actors to improve governance and equity of their conservation work, to improve social and conservation outcomes, but also to, to generate information for actors at higher levels for management oversight, improving governance for system PAs and national reporting. So this uses different methodologies but sits alongside um, SAPA. This offers, in effect, is a, a process that can be done that is workshop based and can, can be done in a, a more constrained period of time that requires a third party facilitation um, of, of the workshops. And this looks at um, three different elements of equity and recognition, procedure and distribution, as well as other governance issues. Um, so it's in effect, the, the users of, of SAGE would look at eight of these 10 uh, within their assessment. Um, the assessment process is, is split into three different steps, um, somewhat like SAPA. In effect, there's a preparation phase where the site profiles develop, the assessments are planned, an assessment phase where facilitators are trained, um, and the actual assessment takes place um, by actors. Um, in a, and then there's a synthesis workshop in which those results are shared and a, a basic report is developed. And then a third and sort of um, uh, not necessarily a, a step that you don't have to do, but it's recommended that a taking action step in which those those results are then put into um, incorporated to site management plans um, and, and support is built for taking action over any issues that have been identified at the site. And then lastly, have I lost the slides there? Strange. Okay. Okay. Um, and then this, the likewise Sage um, has had has had uptake. This is in just the last couple of years, and um, there's been broader up, um, application of Sage uh, in Africa, Asia, Latin America, and Europe. Um, and uh, as rollout continues, especially um, linked to um, sites with small grant funds from BioPharma at the moment. Um, and likewise with SAPA, we're working with uh, JRC to develop an um, analytical support tool for, for SAGE, um, which is currently um, further along a development cycle. This is just some screenshots from that showing you'd have a stepwise process um, on an online or offline tool to help uh, facilitators actually use, use the approach um, and to enable um, much, much easier production of, of reports, et cetera. And I think there was gonna be a subsequent I think tomorrow there will be a separate clinical presentation on on the software itself. So, no for time, I'll, I'll 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 call it a day there. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Rob. And uh, yes, uh, time is running, so I would thank you all of the speakers. Uh, GRC uh, uh, will be able to put you in contact with the, uh, all the speakers of uh, of this session, and uh, I asked my colleague to put in the chat box 
my mail contact so people can contact me. And I would thank Rashir and the ICN colleagues in Marseille for their support. Thank you very much and enjoy the, the next event.